Hello everybody, welcome back to Chris Bosch Props. My name is Chris and today we are going to do a video reviewing and taking a look at the Rebel Point Range 2 3D scanner and I'm super excited for this. The company Rebel Point reached out to me and asked me if I would like to play around with one of their 3D scanners and see how well it scans. And what's even cool about it is I could tell they actually watched the channel because they wanted me to try the scanner out on movie props. There's a lot of videos on YouTube with people trying these scanners and it's usually small objects or car pieces and whatnot, but you don't really see a whole lot on movie prop type stuff. So I'm pretty excited to try it out. What we're going to do is see if we can 3D scan this proton pack shell here. Now I built this from scratch by hand using styrene. I then made a silicone mold and cast it in resin and fiberglass just like a Hollywood movie prop would or at least some of them. So we are going to see how well this range 2 can scan this prop. Now this particular product line the range 2 is for large models or large objects whereas they have other product lines like the Pop Mini and stuff like that that is more for smaller objects and picking up the finer details. So we're gonna try this out together. We're gonna to see how well it works in scanning large objects and then what I wanna do, hopefully if we can get decent enough scans, is 3D print this and really see what it looks like. So come along on the journey with me. We're gonna see how well the Rebel Point Range 2 scanner scans. Let's get into it. Now this is what it comes in. It comes in this really nice little case here. I've already opened it and kind of taken it out of its uh, wrapping to get an idea of what I'm working with. But that's pretty much how it comes. You have the scanner head here itself. It has a few different options that you can use for operation or functionality. I'm going to use the power stick for connecting via Wi-Fi to my laptop. I found that that works the best for me. But they also have, if you have like a turnstile or a turntable that is motorized and can turn on its own, you could set it up on a tripod and then scan the object as it moves around, but the scanner itself would stay stationary. Uh, not really my thing unless I'm doing something small. So we're gonna actually have to move around this proton pack. I found that the Wi-Fi using the power stick is best for scanning large objects. They also have a connector that you can connect your phone and use the app. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the app, or at least I just wasn't good at getting it to work. I kept losing tracking quite a bit on the Proton Pack and other things that I was trying to scan, so I'm not going to use that. I think that further needs to be looked into and sharpened up for people doing this at home. So we're just gonna use the Wi-Fi and walk around the proton pack shell and see what we can get, see how much we can clean up, and see if it can even be 3D printed. Now the Rebel Point website for the Range 2 scanner says that this has a precision of 0.1 millimeters, which if you don't know guys, if you're not familiar with working with measurements, that's extremely precise. So we're gonna see if that really lives up to the truth. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna find out you do kind of have to work with what you got. <laughs> I had some loose plywood laying around and my shop trash can. That's what's being used to prop this up. Adapt and improvise, man. So this is how we got it laid out. I have the little marker blanket underneath and that's how I have the proton pack shell. We are going to try to scan around it. Alrighty guys, we have our scanner hooked up via Wi-Fi to my laptop over there and we're going to get started scanning. Now this is kind of a pain and it is tricky, but we are going to give it a shot. have to kind of move with some finesse and you don't have to try to get everything on the first scan we can kind 
kind of take it easy and then we can fill in the holes later. Okay guys, so now we are in RevoScan. This is the software specifically for the RevoPoint 3D scanners, whichever one you're using. As you can see, we have our 3D model here. Now this is already edited, trimmed up, and I use the features of the software to get the model looking halfway decent in what you see here. Uh, I'm not gonna really go over on how to use this software, but I will say, that it is pretty easy to use, it's not very difficult, it's pretty straightforward, but you can kind of see what I did here real quick. I did multiple scans, so you can see I did one side here. I did another side, I did the front side. I didn't try to get everything in one take is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, it's very hard to get something this large with this much detail in one shot. It's very easy to lose tracking. I lost tracking many, many, many times trying to do everything in one take. So I found the easiest way when doing something this large, if you are going to scan a large prop, is just take it a section at a time. Don't try to walk around the whole thing. Now on some objects or models you might be able to get away with that but on something like this it was not uh, possible so I did 11 different scans here and you can kind of see the different sides and sections now when you do all of these scans and complete it, it will save in your project like so. So you can see I did up to 11 here. And then you can see I have a merge file. So once you have all your scans and you're done, you'll go to Fusion, which will fuse all the cloud points, or you can go to One Click, which was, is kind of like a one click solution and it kind of does everything for you. Uh, I found both of them to be about the same, but I'm sure someone could educate me and kind of tell me the differences. But anyway, you would go to Fusion, you go to Batch Processing, and you can process as many scans as you would like. You have to process it before it allows you to start working on it. Once it is processed, like these have already been batch processed, you can then go to Merge. Now Merge is the first thing I do before I start using any of the other um, tools to smooth out or fix your object. Now you can see here I already have a merge, a merged file which is this one right here. So this is my merged file. Now what I did is it lets you merge up to nine scans. So if you do nine scans really craftily around your object, you can then come in, here let me show you. So there you go. And you can see how, let me get rid of the merge. Now sometimes you'll have a scan that is out of alignment, it'll be sideways, it'll be whichever way, and then what you do is you go to preview the alignment and what the software will do is it'll find markers or tracking that it will, or I'm sorry, features that it will align it for you and then you get to preview that and if you like it and it lined up well, sometimes the software it won't align it like you would probably want. Most of the time I have found that it aligns it pretty well. I did up to nine scans and it aligned it perfectly. 
there is nine scans right there that fill in most of the blanks that I needed for an object this large. Then you go to generate model. Alrighty guys, so once you do your merge with your nine scans that you deemed the best to fill out your model, you'll still have a little bit of holes, but there's features in here that allow you to fill the holes of your model that actually work pretty decent. Um, so yeah, everything's merged here, but we still have our marker blanket that we have to eliminate. But thankfully, there's tools in this software that allow you to cut away. Now this is my favorite one to use. And you kind of just go around your model. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can always offset the Z in your 3D um, slicer software before you print and you can kind of lower it to get rid of the rest. But you can be really intuitive and get in there and get it like as perfect as you want it. It just takes more time. But I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick so you can see, and you just hit the trash button and it eliminates that area for you. And then eventually after you work around all of it, you have this here. Then once I trim everything away like that, then I start go. It, it does it in order for you. Then you go to isolation and it isolates some of the geometry that was picked up around the scan. Uh, you could smooth it, I didn't use that, but you could fill the holes, yada yada. And then once it's pretty much up to your liking and it's decent enough, like we see here, we'll then export it. You wanna export your mesh model. You want it to be an STL and then you name it whatever you want. I usually save everything to my desktop. I just call it Proton Pack Shell Scan. We save it, it exports really fast, and then there you go. But we're gonna wanna further bring this into a CAD software that we can smooth it out just a little bit more and fix some of that rough geometry. So I'm gonna open this STL now into ZBrush. So we have the model now imported into ZBrush. I have to go ahead and poly mesh 3D it. I know some of you are like, what are you talking about, Chris? It's just, it makes it usable in the ZBrush software if you're importing an STL to edit. I'm gonna DynaMesh this uh, around 800, I think is good enough. Now that's gonna vary on the model, the DynaMesh, you just have to kind of play with that. This just makes it usable for me to start editing it. And then I am going to subdivide it. And I could already see some excess geometry here that I want to smooth out. Alrighty, so I'm going to export this out of ZBrush. And again, you're just going to make an STL. I mean, you could use Blender to do this as well. Just save it to our desktop. And now we're going to open it in Simplify 3D. That's my slicer that I like to use. And I'm going to try to print this at 50% scale on my Neptune 4 Max. So I have the 3D scan model imported into Simplify 3D. I'm getting ready to 3D print it. But I did want to show you guys the scale. So this pack shell right here was built by me from scratch in CAD software using direct measurements from a screen used proton pack shell from the original Ghostbusters movie in 1984. And here we have the 3D scan from my scratch built one that I did by hand. So this one was built in software. Uh, this one was built by hand, but the 3D scan of it you can tell picked up the scale. This was also built by hand from direct measurements from the original shell. So yeah, the 3D scanner is pretty precise when it comes to um, scale. I did not have to scale that guys. There was no manipulation. I will show you, there is the model. It is 100% scale as you see there. That is how it directly imported into the software. So I'm going to reduce this to 50% scale, and there we go. I'm about to send this directly to the printer. Let's see how it comes out, guys. 
This is my first 3D scan, I'm excited. Okay guys, so we're gonna pull this off the bed. It just got done. 3D printing it, let's get a look at it. Okay, so this is 50% scale of the shell that I scanned. And you can see there's a lot of top layers that are not completely flat. And that isn't because of the software, that actually is because none of these surfaces on this shell are flat. Therefore, when your slicer slices it, it gives you layers like that if the surface isn't completely flat. Now, I intentionally did that because I was replicating the original proton pack shell. Here, I have an angle and you can see, look, that is not a flat surface. Look at that. Same thing here. That is not a flat surface. None of these surfaces are flat. They have some give to them and it was able to pick up all that warping and that's why you have those top layers like that. Now I could have fixed that by printing it at an angle, but then again, I would have used more supports and you wouldn't have seen any of that. Or I could have adjusted the adaptive layer height and it might have kind of smoothed it out a little bit more. But yeah, it's just print orientation. But yeah, that really does show the precision of the Rebel Point Range 2 scanner. And that is definitely cool, really cool. But yeah, it picked it up pretty good, guys. I have to say. Now the edges aren't as sharp as I would have liked, in all honesty. But for just a little bit of playing around, that's not bad <laughs> at all. Now I probably next time if I printed it, would print it you know, at an angle so I don't have all the, the top layers like that. But yeah, pretty cool. Not too shabby. I could have spent more time on the model and really sharpened up all those edges, but man, I mean, just for the, the lowest setting on the quality, that, that's not bad at all. I probably could have got away printing this full scale, but it would have took a lot more cleanup with those top layers like that. And then I need to hollow it out. That's another thing. But yeah, guys, I mean, boom, it worked. It, wore, it took some practice to learn how to use the scanner to get what I needed, but once I figured it out, it wasn't too bad. Not too shabby guys, not too shabby. So yeah, the 3D scanner works. I'm gonna get into my final thoughts and kind of share exactly how I feel about it. Okay guys, so now for my final thoughts on the Rebel Point Range 2 scanner. I've been working with it for a couple of weeks now and do I recommend it for y'all? Well, before I recommend it, I need to tell you what I don't like about it, and then I'll tell you what I do like about it, and then I'll tell you who I recommend it to and who I don't recommend it to. So what I didn't like right off the bat is that it is not user friendly. This thing takes a lot of practice. You're gonna lose tracking quite a bit. I kept losing tracking, losing tracking, losing tracking. I was trying to scan the whole entire proton pack shell and it just wouldn't work. So I had to learn how to move and I had to learn that I just couldn't get everything in one take. I had to do multiple scans of certain sections of the shell. And then I think overall I did about 11 scans and only nine of those can you merge in the software to get a full shell. So yeah, guys, if you're thinking you're just gonna get this, get your scan, be done with it, now nah, it takes practice. It took a couple hours of practice for me to get it just right to get this, this proton pack shell. Now, if it was something smaller, it would have been way, 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 way easier. But yeah, something this large, this detailed, 
it's going to take a little bit of work. The next thing right off the bat that I did not like about the Rebel Point Range 2, and this could be a discrepancy on my part, this be, could be my fault in terms of I didn't really know what I was doing, but that the sharp edges of the model, these sharp edges here, when it's processed into the software, it kind of softens them. Now you'll see that on the 3D printed model is that those edges should be sharp, but for some reason, the software softens all of them. And I don't really like that because I did want a direct scan with the sharp edges. So in order for me to sharpen those, I would then have to process, import them into a CAD software, rebuild around those parts and sharpen them up. And that was one thing I did not like and hopefully Rebel Point can work in the software so that when it processes your scan, it will sharpen those edges instead of softening them. I even tried to increase the quality, but then that slowed down my laptop where I could barely do anything and the edges still weren't that sharp. So I think it's more of a software issue rather than a scanner issue. Hopefully they can work on that. Now what I do like about the Revo Point scanner is that it is precise. As you can see on the 3D model, you kind of have those layers on the top that aren't very smooth. And that's because this scanner was so precise that it picked up the warping that was on the top shell. None of the surfaces on my shell are flat. They're all kind of warped in because I was trying to mimic and replicate the screen used proton pack show used in the original Ghostbusters movie and it picked up all that warping. That's why all the top layers on the proton pack show look funny. They don't look right because it picked up all the warping. So the precision is excellent when it comes to the 3D scanner and it really gives you the foundation that you want like I showed you previously in Simplify 3D when I put the scan next to a model that I built by hand using the same measurements they pretty much were exact in terms of scale so it does work and it is precise. Another thing I do like is the software. The software is really easy to use. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube on how to use it, so I didn't really want to do a how-to. I just kind of wanted to do a quick rundown and show you, but it's super easy to use. And I do like that about the software because they do go hand in hand, and it does give you enough tools to smoothen that model up enough. So. Who do I recommend it to? I recommend it to someone who has CAD experience. If you're wanting to get this because you want to reverse engineer a part that is hard to get or isn't available, say an engine part, it could be a movie prop part, it could be any kind of part. If you have CAD experience and you want to reverse engineer that part and you need to scan it, it'll work perfectly. It'll give you the foundation that you want. You could then import it into Fusion 360 or any other kind of CAD software, sharpen it up, rebuild around some holes it might not pick up, and there you go, you got your part. So that is who I recommend it to. Who I don't recommend it to is someone that is new to 3D modeling, new to 3D printing, new to the 3D world in general, because if you're expecting this to be an easy tool that's just gonna give you everything you want in one shot, it's not going to work. But if you're willing to learn, practice, and train with this and learn CAD, absolutely. You can figure it out and get what you need. But if you're that guy that just wants it in one shot, this isn't going to be for you. I wouldn't even waste the money. That's pretty much it. That's all I have to say about the Rebel Point Range 2. I had a lot of fun working with it. I've always wanted one of these. I'm telling you, I almost bought one. And I was like, eh, I'm not sure it's really there where I want it yet. And I'm glad I did it because I don't think it's quite there yet for what I want. But it still is amazing that they reached out to me and wanted me to give it a shot, give it a try, and give you my honest thoughts. That's my honest thoughts, guys. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching, and we're on to the next one. Have a good one.